or after today, and we'll send that out as well as audio. So if you want to share that with colleagues or somebody else and some great information you're going to hear today, you can do that. But we're always so glad to have you guys here. And please, we're just so you know, um, if this is your first time being here, we really want to get your questions. And so down at the bottom, if you see the, the it says uh, Q and A, uh, you know, hit that, and we'll ask for maybe some polls throughout the deal. And so we just any anything that you guys want to share, or if you've had some experience along the way, please ask us because that's what uh, we're real fortunate to have our guests here today, and they're going to do that. So. We'll give it just another minute or so, and then we'll kick right. things off. Hey, Charity. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Michael. Hey, Patricia. Thanks so much for coming. If you guys want to put your location and the organization you're with in the chat function, we can all kind of talk to each other that way. You can obviously ask questions in the chat feature and the Q&A feature, whatever's clever for you. So thanks so much for coming. Are we going to kick it off, amigo? Uh, I think we're going to kick it off. Let's just give about another 30 seconds and then we'll get to rocking. I just see some more people coming in and we know that we got a bunch more people that are going to be joining us. So we'll get things going. All right. All right. Joyce from Trisha, Amarillo. Columbus, Ohio. Joyce is Amarillo. Angela from oh, Maui. Right. It's very early there. Thank you so much. Great. Thanks, Thank Angela, you guys for being here. Thanks for tuning in from Paradise. We appreciate it. All right, brother, let's get going. Hey, all right, excellent. So how to make a big ask. Uh, this is a topic that we've been wanting to cover that we, that we kind of peck at every single time we're, we're on here. And um, we've got a couple experts in this space. Uh, and uh, Jason Ledlow, my partner, Trevor Nelson, HGA Fundraising. And this is a, a free webinar series that we're doing every Thursday. So thanks so much for joining us. As Jason mentioned, please stay till the very end. We'll draw a winner. Uh, for a travel item that you can use at your next fundraising event. If you didn't hear it already, Q&A function at the bottom of the screen, chat feature, we'll ask questions. Feel free, this is very interactive to pepper questions at our, at our panelists the entire time, and uh, they're eager to help. Uh, and of course, we'll be, we'll be recapping everything and setting out all the, the slide decks and, and recordings post-webinar. Post um, we have a couple of really, really lovely guests. Uh, uh, the National Director of Corporate Engagement and Business Development with the Muscular Dystrophy Association, uh, Bonnie Fuchs, uh, coming in from Long Island, New York. She's an expert in the space and has given us a... Yeah, thank you so much for coming, Bonnie. Nice round of applause from Long Island. Okay, you have a, you have a team there. That's great. Thank you so much. And then, of course, uh, Amy Myers. Uh, National Senior Director of Fundraising and Community Engagement with Muscular Dystrophy Association with us as always, or as much as we can get her to be with us. So uh, once again, I can't speak to this enough. A couple, a couple heavy, heavy hitters in this space and how to make big asks uh, to, to donors and uh, to get your committee uh, motivated to do so and, and how to go about doing that. Uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna do a deep dive, but once again, Fire the questions away at your convenience whenever things occur to you, and we'll get to them uh, in an orderly fashion. And uh, yeah, we're here to help. So we'll take it away, Jason. Uh, okay. So one of the things that we've been talking is we talk to organizations like yours all over the country. And, you know, we're real fortunate to be able to get a really broad spectrum from coast to coast, literally. And one of the things that I keep seeing is the reluctance to make that big ask or the... Um, uh, where somebody's, you know, where they're, they've got an event and they're looking at sponsorship levels and, you know, they're not, they've been kind of withholding, holding back to do it. But yet then again, whenever we see people who are making those big asks, they're coming away in a big, big way that uh, is really making a significant um, difference in their organization. And so we're really glad to do this. And so I know there's going to be, you know, Bonnie's professional fundraiser and doing this, Amy as well. So we're so glad to have them here. And so Bonnie, you know, I, I know you've got a presentation. I'm going to put some slides up for you to go through um, that I think is really going to be fantastic. But, you know, just give us a overall pulse of what you guys are seeing from across the country with giving. Well, this year has been challenging for many organizations because of the pandemic. But that being said, people still want to be engaged in philanthropy and giving. It's, a, it's an area that can still make them feel good about their lives. And um, 
the, the resistance or the, the, the giving is almost the same as it was pre pandemic you know, You're still getting the same objections. You're still getting the same questions. And we're still getting this, you know, a lot of the same support that we were getting before. Well, thank you. You know, that's one of the things that I was surprised to hear this, that charitable giving in the United States was up 2.8% in 2020 which is pretty amazing when you, you know, think about everything that was going on, everybody, you know, there's been a lot of reluctance from organizations to reach out because they thought maybe somebody wasn't doing as well. But the reality is your mission is important to people, regardless of the circumstance of the pandemic or anything else. And the work that nonprofits are doing that you guys are all doing across the country still goes on every day. And the impact of that is what's important. Um, so again, we're really glad to have uh, you guys here. So I'm going to pop this slide up here. And we're going to get on with Bonnie's basics. I hope everybody can see this. And again, you know, we're going to send this out. We'll send the deck out. So if you see something or have a question, please just ask that question. And uh, uh, Trevor will get up to it and he'll we'll stop and get that asked and everything along the way. So Bonnie, take it away. Well, Trevor and uh, Jason, thank you so much for having me. And while today's subject is the big ask, Really, whether you're asking for $100 or a million dollars, the ask is still the same. So today I'm going to be focusing on what I call Bonnie's basics. And there are two components to this that are really important. One is time, because you have to put in the time. You can put in all the time in the world, but if you don't have the right technique, it's not gonna matter. So you have to have the, the correct technique and then a balance with the time to, in order to get those results. Um, it's a cocktail waitress, believe me, would rather sell a bottle of champagne than a bottle of beer because it's the same amount of work and the rewards are, uh, are much different. So get the next slide, please. It all comes down to relationship building and, and the foundation of relationship building is developing trust and confidence that your sponsor or donor has in you. And in, in order to get that foundation as a representative of your company and of your mission, you have to be knowledgeable about what you are offering. You have to really be able to know everything about your company, about your mission. And you have to always approach that with a level of integrity. Honesty is the most important thing. And after that, being responsive to your um, to your prospects, to your donors, to your sponsors. And those three things are really the building blocks of being able to make the ask. Uh, next slide, please. So you have a prospect and what's really important, what I always make sure I do is that I know them. I really do a deep dive, research, research, research. I will Google them. I will Google their company. I will go into LinkedIn. I will learn about their industry. I will learn everything that I can. So when I speak to them, I'm coming from a point of being interested because people like, like to know that you're interested in them and what they're doing. It's about what, what we can do for the prospect and the donor, not what they can do for us. So I always try to find out what are their charitable interests? What other organizations have they sponsored? Uh, what's their financial situation? These are all questions that are good to know. And the more knowledge you have about them, when you get the answers, you will be able to incorporate that into your ask. Uh, next slide, please. All right. So that really goes to selling your mission. I think a lot of us, especially pre-COVID, were really um, more interested in selling our events or selling, um, yes, you know, come, come to our event, come to our golf outing. And really, th those are great and those are fun things to sell, but it really gets down to the mission. And I think this year with COVID, if you weren't able to pivot to selling that mission, you really lost a lot of your clients and interests because the events were not there to position. So you really have to understand the value of your mission and, and what's driving your donor or prospect to engage with it. So it's really how, like I said before, how is it gonna benefit the donor or the sponsor? 
how is your organization's mission going to align with their mission? How is it going to create a synergy so that one plus one equals three? And whenever you get the objections, and we always get objections, it's good to bring those objections back to how it connects with their mission. You know, how is it going to benefit the sponsor? What's their return on investment going to be? So it's really mission, mission, mission. And it's the same thing if you're selling, like I said, a hundred dollars or a hundred thousand dollar sponsor. It's all about the mission and getting them to engage with it and to understand the benefits of being involved in the mission. Next slide, please. Um Real quick, Bonnie, I want to ask a question real quick, if I can. So you said something that I think is really um, important for everybody. You know, you said when you're doing the tournaments and packages, can you speak to that for just a minute about, and, and you may get to that in the slide, but I think this is a really uh, quick piece. And everybody, hey, I know there were some people asking, if you look in the upper right-hand corner of your screen, you'll see it says view. Just click that down and go to gallery, and you should be able to see both slides at that time. So uh, you should be able to see both of them right there, I hope. Um, so if you'll do that, but I know the recording will show both of them. So when you do see that, and we'll send the slides out as well. But Bonnie, back to my question. One of the things that I see happen a lot, especially in the last year, is that, you know, all of a sudden people are saying, well, you know, well, gosh, I don't have a sponsorship. And they get into a transactional of, you get a table and for 10 and we're going to get, you know, you get two bottles of champagne and you get your name up on this slide and you get this deal and it becomes very transactional versus mission impact. Can you talk about that for just a minute since you, you mentioned it? Yes. And, and even when we were having events, one of the things I tried to do was really to eliminate a lot of the deliverables because I felt that if we were selling the mission, they were in for that. And did they really care if they got the bigger table, the closer table, the, the, their name and the collateral? I mean, all of a sudden, all your time is spent managing the deliverables and not managing the prospect and the donor. So if you, it goes back to selling the mission. If you sell the mission, then all the other is really secondary. And you'll, at least I have found that the clients aren't always that interested in what the deliverables are. Yes, they like to see their name and yes, they like to see a return on investment. Don't get me wrong, that's important, but it really goes back to selling the mission. And then you won't get as, as many um, requests and objections and, and really focusing the time and energy on giving them the deliverables. And this year there were no deliver, there were very few deliverables to give. So. Yeah, it's really hard to give ver uh, deliverables whenever it's a virtual event. I mean, right. so we, you know, it's a whole lot of stuff you can't really do. Right. So, so in, instead of giving a table for our virtual events this year, we gave our big sponsors the opportunity to do a 30 or second second testimonial as to why they're supporting the mission, why they're supporting MDA, why, why they're supporting the research that we do for ALS and other neuromuscular diseases. So again, we brought it back to the mission. Cool. Okay, well, I'm going to get back in the slides and we'll just move right next to the next one and keep going. So once we've established everything that I just talked about, the most important thing that I find I can do when I'm meeting with a client is to ask questions and then to stop talking and really to listen to what they say. It's really human nature as someone's talking to like try to be formulating your answer or trying to think of what the next question should be. But if we really just listen and drill down to what they are saying, you can really determine what they're objecting to. Is it the money? Is it the location? Is it, is it the return on investment? Is it their mission? Is it that they're involved with other events and they don't have time to be involved with yours? And once you have listened and you see what their concerns are, it gets back to what I said at the beginning about basics, to being responsive to them, to address their, their concerns. And if you don't know what the time is, nothing wrong with saying, you know, let me get back to you. Let me find someone at the organization who can, who can answer this better than I can. Gets back to what I was saying again about integrity and knowledge and know, knowing your organization so that you can ask answer their questions that you've asked um, as, as best as possible. Next slide, please. 
So this is one of this is one of my favorite things to do, and that is to paint a picture. It's really to create a vision for somebody of what your mission is going to accomplish for them, so that they can really visualize what what being um, engaged with your company is going to be. So you want to kind of quantify the results of what their donation is going to do, and let the prospect be able to imagine how their sponsors and donors and their employees will, will benefit from experience, experiencing connection with your organization. And um, depending on, on what your organization is, and if you know your mission and you're knowledgeable about it, you'll be able to paint a, a really good picture of how them being a sponsor can really be uh, life altering in many ways for their organization and the benefits of them seeing the good that they're doing, especially in this um, age of corporate responsibility. I want to ask a question back on this, uh, on, on, on the slide that you mentioned, you said, you know, um, and, and you made this, you said, you know, really being able to speak to the mission. So I did a, was doing a retreat for a, a board one time and I went around the room and I said, I asked that, told the executive director, I've done this a few times. I said, okay, the executive director, I don't, don't say anything. The staff didn't want them to say anything. This was just for the board. And I said, in 30 seconds or less, tell me what you guys do. And it was amazing how even the board who, you know, who are, financially and uh, legally, you know, responsible for this organization, were not able to verbalize that mission, really what they did and, and do it in 30 seconds. I mean, they knew basically what they do, but they really got, you know, into the semantics of it. Well, you know, we've been around for 23 years and we've done this and we do that. And they didn't ever really drive into it. And when we got them on board to do that, whenever they were doing outreach and they were doing those calls and making the big asks, you know, networking and stuff like that, and they were able to do that, you know, just have a little elevator speech, if you would, it really increased their giving significantly to where they could do it. And I think that you'll be, don't make assumptions and don't assume that your board or staff or everybody really can do it. I mean, it's a, it's a great exercise to do with your teams out there um, and with yourself. And if you're having some trouble with that, reach, you know, get somebody and say, okay, look, I've got to get my, I've got to get this down because when I go to ask somebody, um, you know, if our mission is that we put kids through camp, you don't need to talk about the camp's been around for, you know, 32 years. That's a great piece of it. But the reality is the impact of what you're doing is that you're putting kids through camp. And that's the piece that, you know, donors want to get to. What, are, what is my investment with you going to do? Not, you know, it's going to pay for this or pay for, I mean, that's what, it, that's what they want to know. I mean, am I, am I off on that, Bonnie? No, it's how are you going to help them make a, a difference and a change. So when I meet with sponsors for the first time or if I'm with a group of people, I work for the Muscular Dystrophy Association. Our mission is to impact those who are affected by ALS, neuromuscular disease and muscular dystrophy. I will say to them, and it's, it's, I haven't been able to, I mean, because you'll see why. I'll usually start the meeting off by saying, you know, please, please turn to the person next to you and, and shake their hand or do a high five. And then I'll say, you know, the people that, that are affected that we that our mission wants to reach they can't do that we take that for granted that you can just hug someone or talk to them or I said people with neuromuscular disease don't always have that ability and, and you being able to connect with our mission will help through research and enhance treatments to to accomplish that and it really makes you can see the light bulb going off it really mm -hmm. makes the connection to the mission and how what they can do to help the people that are affected by what we're trying to help. Cool. Well, I think that's the deal is just that everybody's got to connect. Right. You have to connect and, and everyone's going to paint a different picture depending on what your mission is. Um, and so my, my final advice is to be a fierce fundraiser. And that doesn't mean to be aggressive or to, to be inconsiderate. It just means to find your inner fundraiser. Once you have the appointment, that means that your sponsor or donor is already interested. You, you already have the hook in, in there if, you're, if you fish. You just have to reel them in. 
And the prospect is expecting an ask. You're a fundraiser. That's what we do. They know that you're going to be asking for money. So be confident in your ask. Don't, don't second guess yourself and, and don't feel that your ask is inappropriate or they're going to think less of you or they're going to reject you because you, you are, you're asking for a large amount of money. Now, if you've gone through all your basics and you've spent the time and the technique and you have the knowledge and, and you've drilled down and you've asked them, you're going to have a pretty good idea of what they can afford to invest. And that's always the word I use, they're investing in the mission. You're gonna have a good idea of what that investment could be. And, and maybe you could ask for a bit more and there's always room to negotiate, but be confident with the number. A big number it might be scary to you, but it's, it might not be scary to the sponsor or the donor. And then be gracious. There always has to be room to, to, to let them say no, because honestly, a no is really the beginning of a relationship with them. They've already shown that they're interested. And sometimes it just takes time. Um, sometimes it can take a couple of years to get someone to, to do their first sponsorship or their, their donor, or maybe to get them up to the next level. So um, that's really my advice. I, I hope I've been helpful and, and I welcome any questions that you oh. have. Yeah, let's. Uh, so if you guys have questions, please either in the chat or down the Q&A, please give those questions. So I'm going to jump out here and ask a question because, you know, we put out there, you know, making a big ask. So whenever I think of making a big ask, I'm thinking like in the 25, 50, 100,000 or more uh, world. So Bonnie, tell me, how do you decide how much you're going to ask a client for or a, a potential donor for? Well, first, like I said, when I do the research and I and I've met with them and I, I do get some idea of what you, you don't want to go in looking foolish either and making an ass that's completely inappropriate. Mm -hmm. But part of it is qualifying. If, if you if you're looking for a hundred thousand dollar sponsor, you need to qualify and and go after people that are capable of making $100,000 um, donations or sponsors. And part of that is, is relationship building. And one of my $100,000 sponsors started off as a $10,000 sponsor. And three, three years later, they were a $100,000 sponsor. So the big ask might be down the road and might be starting off with a mid ask, but it's really qualifying and, and making sure that you have the, the, right, the right prospect in front of you. Okay. So I'm a new, I'm, you know, let's say I'm a, I'm a fundraiser. I'm, you know, one of the people listening here today that is tuned in and my, I've got an event coming up and I have, I've gotten, you know, we've gone through our, you know, a people exercise and we have people that we know. How do I make that ask and how do I decide kind of where that number is? Let's just say that I know that this person can write a $50,000 check and not miss and not miss it. So where, where do you kind of, you know, so they've got significant capacity. Where do you start out in that? I mean, obviously with the mission and the impact and things like that, but like really prime us up and kind of help us get that, that actual piece going. Once we've got the meeting, we're sitting there in front of them and we know that they want it, they want to do something. How do you get to that number? Well, I usually have um, discussed it with them uh, before about what, what range that they are comfortable giving in. And then I lay it out as far as what impact their donation is going to have on the mission. So in, in my company, it's usually about funding research or funding care for people who have neuromuscular disease. And I have found that if I can make that connection to how their donation is going to impact the, uh, the families that we serve, that, like I said, that light bulb goes off and they are more than happy to make the donation. And sometimes like this year, I've had some big, big donors cut their donations. You know, their companies have been hurting. So, um, but I've still been able to get rather large asks. Just by making cool. that connection. Yeah, okay, questions. great, well, thank you. Yeah. Now we've got some questions. So. Um, so, Bonnie, how do you adjust technique for making a large ask for potential sponsors that you have a great personal relationship with? Great question. Well, it's interesting because a lot of my sponsors now, I started off as through introductions, and now I have a great relationship with them, and I actually find that it makes it easier. 
So for me, have, developing that relationship and having a great relationship with somebody um, has made it easier. And again, we're fundraisers. They expect us to make the ask. If, it's, if you're so close that you feel completely uncomfortable doing it, then maybe you shouldn't be doing it. And maybe you should find someone else in your organization to introduce them to who can help you with the ask. So you, you're not put in an in a uncomfortable position. You know, it's, it's better sometimes to, to, to punt the ball to someone else who you know can make the goal. Great. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, but Trevor, you want to hit it with the next one? Yeah. Yeah. So Lauren had a question and I mean, I'm going to throw this, not just at Bonnie, but at, at you and Amy as well, whoever wants to grab it, maybe we can all kind of answer it in our own way, just to, to give the, the, the best answer possible for Lauren. So how is the, the, how is it similar or different for parents at a public school when asking for a donation? Do we have any school experience? You mean um, asking for MBA, of course, but nonetheless. Right. I, I, like I, I'll go back to what I said before, whether you're asking for a school donation or a donation for a nonprofit or a donation, what I, I still think it's, it's the same thing. If you can get the parent to connect to what you need and how they're, they're donating to it is going to help the school, you stand sure. a much better chance of them Get, getting the donation. I mean, if it's Super that big and you need to put their name on the on the library door, <laughs> maybe you can work something out with the school. But um, again, I think it's making the parents see the value and the, re the return of their investment to the students. You know, I, I think, I think okay. a way that, you know, Lauren, that you can do is, is one is, first you've got to ask the question to the right people and make sure that, you know, if you, and we kind of, everybody kind of knows, especially in the school organization, um, you know, uh, whether it's public school or whatever, when you kind of start looking around, you kind of know who's, who has capacity and who doesn't. And then also the thing is the people around it. One of the things that we found, you know, with local organization here, that's a, it's an art program that goes through the school was they went to the home builders. They went to the home builders because they're the ones that are building homes and try, you know, filling the, uh, that with the school. They want to have a, you know, what's the number one thing people look at is school district. So they wanted to build their district up and they want to do it. So people that have, uh, uh, whether it's, you know, apartment complexes, other properties, things like that, developers, um, business developers, they want to have that strong school base. And so, you know, we had a deal where they went around and they went to the people that are actually investing in infrastructure and doing that because that's one of the ways that they're able to get people to come and to become their tenants, to become their renters, uh, to fill their spaces in their, their community to say, we've got to, you know, we're investing back in the school. And so don't underestimate those. Um, even if they don't have some kid, a kid going to school there, they want to see the school system succeed and you can find some great uh, and generous people to do it right there. Benefits to everyone. Made a good, Jason made a good point that I actually left out and that is, to make sure you're dealing with the decision maker because yeah. you don't want to go through the whole thing and then find that you weren't speaking to the right person. And, and regarding yeah. community involvement, uh, I was involved in our local elementary school. They needed to raise $200,000 to build a new playground, the old one was not to code. And they, they wanted to have a bake sale. And I said to them, unless they're thinking of putting something illegal in the brownies, they weren't going to make that kind of money. And we should do a letter writing campaign and ask people to name the different pieces of equipment. And they were resistant to do that and finally agreed to it. And the first check that came in was for $50,000 to name the playground. So if you do give the community the, a reason to, to don donate, they will. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You also, it good. sounds like you also have to be, you have to be unabashed as well and willing to put yourself out there. Fierce. Like I love that. what you said, Bonnie, yeah. about being a fierce great. fundraiser. Yeah, that's so great, good. great, great anecdote. Right. Um, so, so Catherine Colios has a question as well. I think it's another great question. I think it'll probably, I mean, early on in the slide presentation, Bonnie, you were talking about, you know, obviously having strong relationships. I want to say it was one of the first, one of your first rules. We could all probably speak to that. Um, there's a, a particular question. Um, so do you have any advice for people in really small shops, small nonprofits about the most effective, time efficient ways to cultivate and steward major donors so that when the ask comes, the groundwork is really strong? So it sounds kind of basic, but I think there's a lot of layers to that, right? You know, in a, in a, in a really great way. 
I stay in touch with my sponsors and donors all year round, whether there's right. an ask or not. Yeah. If it's saying right. happy birthday or how are they doing during COVID or whatever, whatever there is. If I, if I see an interesting article about our organization or new treatments, I send it to them. I'm always trying to keep them engaged. Um, if they change jobs, I'm, I'm follow them on LinkedIn. So th that's really, for me, has been the best way to, to keep them, you know, involved throughout the year, whether there's something for them to, to be, to be giving at that time or not. Awesome. Awesome. That's great. That's great. Um, the questions are coming in. So uh, we have another, another great question from Brittany. So thanks so much everyone for the questions. Keep them coming, please. Uh, Brittany said, as a question, when you receive an introduction to a potential donor, how long after the initial meeting or conversation do you make that ask? It might not be a perfect science, but it's a great question. What are the steps you take that lead up to that first ask? I'm sure a lot of it has to go with intuition, but I'm sure you have a strategy as well, Bonnie. So. I do have a strategy. So I've been introduced yeah. to someone. I've set up the meeting. I know they're already interested. I do my research. Um, my first meeting with them is really exploratory, learning as much as I can about them, what their interests are, who, who else they're donating to, what their company's like, uh, explaining yes. to them about our mission, and then seeing how we can interface with each other. And my second meeting, um, maybe depending on the first meeting, coming back with, with some suggestions of how they could participate in the mission, how can they engage their employees and, and what being involved in the mission means to them. And usually awesome. by then I have a pretty good feel uh, for, for, for the third meeting. Um, by the third meeting, I'm, I'm usually up to you know, the close you know, at this point. Bonnie, what would you say the, the time frame from that first meeting to that third meeting where you're making the close? Like what, what time frame are you ta talking typically? Um, well, sometimes it could be a few weeks and sometimes it could be a few months. It really, you know, some people are just more available than others and some people do the, you know, the, the, the two-step dodge. But um, I'd say in, in general, it's, it's a couple of months. Cool. So, thank you. You know, one of the things I think that one of the things I just want to add something, you know, and it kind of goes back to the previous question we had as well. Um, it's who we know. I mean, one of the things is if you're going out trying to get as Bonnie is, is making these big corporate asks, but sometimes right in our organization, we have people that have connections to people with significant capacity. This is the most powerful fundraising tool I've ever seen in my life. It's a little phone and it's the contact base that you have within this that you find and just simply go into who do we know get your board to pull their phone out start in the a's and start going through and say who do we know that could help our mission and you start scrolling through the a's and the b's and people start putting the names up and just get the names well then you can go back and say okay can they write a check for fifty thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars and not miss it do they have that capacity does their company have that capacity and you can identify really quick people who we know do we all have some, you know, that power of one away relationship? And I think, Bonnie, you would say it's a whole lot easier to walk into a warm call if, you know, Trevor picks up the phone and says, hey, Amy, um, I want you to meet with Bonnie. She, this is a really important mission with MBA, and I need you to go do this because we know that Amy's got significant capacity to give. I mean, is that a lot better than having just a cold call out of nowhere? Oh, absolutely. There's, there's nothing more demoralizing than spending all your time cold calling because you, you, in some ways you're looking for that needle in the haystack. Two of my largest sponsors are because of introductions and so, uh, it makes the world a world of difference. Another, and Amy and I were just talking about this. Another one of my large sponsors, I was at an event and I just paid attention to who was donating during the mission and then um, looked them up afterwards. And it was like, hi, you know, I saw you donated $10,000 during the mission moment, can we meet? I already knew they were interested. They just gave a lot of money. Yeah. And that led to yeah. a, one of our largest sponsorships. You know, another thing that you can do, especially for the, the organizations, is go and look at last year. Pull, your, pull, your, pull the information out of last year or 2019. Let's just go back two years even if you have to, because maybe you didn't have an event last year. Go and look at everybody who, gave, who, who made a gift, made a donation, and really look at the list. Don't just 
you know, go through and go, well, you know, this person gave 500, but look at somebody to say, okay, we've never seen this person before. And they gave us a thousand dollars. Has anybody talked to them? Has anybody followed up with them? A lot of times after events, we've had, the, we've had the same kind of main donors over the years. We, you know, you know, we've got the people that buy the platinum table. We've got some people that buy the gold tables, but we've got somebody that gave us a thousand dollars who was sitting at the platinum table. And we've got to put that together. All of a sudden, you've got somebody who may have significant capacity to give and you've never reached out to them other than maybe sending, you know, you might have sent a thank you, but you maybe not, didn't reach out to them. And back to the whole thing, there was an organization um, the end of last year. They had a, a, a grant, uh, a $100,000 grant, and they had done almost no fundraising. There were two people in this small organization. And in less than a month's time, they went and raised the other $100,000. And all they did was pull their phone out, scroll through the people they knew, and they said, who do we know that for them, they were looking for $4,000 was the, the key number for them. And they said, do, do they care about what we do? And they, we put their name up there. Can they write a check for $4,000 and not miss it? And they just simply got on the phone and started calling these people, you know, talking about the mission impact, what it would do. And in less than 30, um, it was probably days, they raised an, another $100,000 because they had this match going with it. And so this is a very small organization. Now, they, you know, and they didn't do any more than reach into their own personal contacts that they knew. And then they had a conversation. So please don't underestimate what you have already right there. So, right. And don't, don't, I, don't underestimate, and Amy can probably address this even better than me, the committees that we work with. Now, I'm on the other side of that. I'm actually on a couple of committees for some organizations that I volunteer my time with out here on the East End. And as a committee member, I am expected to bring in contacts, to bring in other committee members, to bring in either auction items or to bring in sponsors. And I have a dollar amount that I need to fulfill in order to remain on the committee. And so, so don't underestimate your committees because we have some committees at MDA that are much more effective than others. Absolutely. I like it, Derek, give or get. Yeah, I think, I think that there's some really lovely um, just underlying points here about how the world is big, but we're a little bit more connected than we probably realize as far as these relationships. Bonnie seems to be uh, almost down to a science as, this, as far as this recognition is concerned with people and and, and, and witnessing human behavior at certain events and whatnot and cultivating those relationships um, is, yeah, that's amazing. That sounds really, really awesome. I think we could all, we could all utilize those tools. That's for sure. That's so great. Well, I, also, really, I really, really enjoy great. what I'm doing. I really like I what can I tell. do. I can tell. I, I, yeah. I, I, it makes me feel good. Listen, we could all be working yeah. for our profit organizations and probably making a lot more money. But when you're working sure. for a nonprofit, part is actually feeling connected to the mission myself and of that course. I'm helping and I'm, I'm making the world a better place to live in. Of course, of course, of course. That's well, yeah, uh, that, that the sincerity is obvious, Bonnie. So I appreciate that. I think that's fantastic. I hey, just great. everybody make sure that you stay. I'm just going to pop in here. Make sure you stay at the end. We are going to draw a, um, a winner for a trip that you're going to be able to use to raise funds here in just a few minutes. Yeah. Um, yeah. But keep those questions um, coming. Does anybody have, have any other questions? Really, really cool though. Yeah, please bring the questions. But like, but Bonnie, you were talking about how you stay in contact with your supporters throughout the year and send them pertinent articles to really show them where their dollars are going. I don't know if everyone does that. It seems kind of obvious probably to you and to some folks that are on here. When I heard that, I was like, oh my goodness, it could, but that could apply to any organization, right? You're showing your largest supporters or any supporters for that matter, where their dollars are truly going and it's pertinent and it's real and it's a deep dive. And I think that's a really, really cool way, a real creative way, also a very genuine way to stay in front of them, you know? Um, and so folks are always looking for reasons, but it could, it could be as simple as how are your kids, right? Or, you know, how are things going for your company, right? So it sounds like, you have that you have that dialed in really really nicely but i love the idea of like sharing where the dollars went for the playground at the school or or or, or a certain uh you know bit of research um that you all are doing on your end for instance and sharing that with your larger support i just think that's uncanny and i think that's really really easy and that's something that you could probably implement today right no matter who you are or who you're working for or with so i thought that was really really lovely i think 
I think that there's some personal touch stuff that would uh, that occurs to some of us um, as commonplace or second nature that doesn't always occur to everyone else. We have our you know, we have our things that we're great at. That was one of that was a personal touch thing. I thought that was really, really impactful. It could be used right away. So I'm thankful you shared that. Bonnie, I've got a question. This is for Amy. This is for Amy and Bonnie, both of you. Give us an example, if you don't mind, of hopefully you, I think you'll probably have one of where you recently got other, you know, you just gave one where you said you gave the example of the uh, uh, naming rights to a playground where they, you know, came up with $50,000 and they weren't expecting it. Give us another example that you've had here recently where you've um, had somebody where maybe you weren't expecting that large of a gift to come, you know, large of a donation or sponsorship to come in that did. Well, one of the things I did, and I think Trevor might have just alluded to that, or maybe it was you, Jason, I actually went over past committee lists, committee who were on the committees, who weren't anymore. And I reached out to them to re-invite them to, to rejoin the committee because we were looking to expand it. And I attached a sponsorship form and I said, you know, if you can't join, maybe you can sponsor. And, and this was, I started this last year. One of the, one of the ex-committee members came back with a $10,000 donation. I, I was floored. I mean, how generous it was. And here all I was asking her was to come back onto the committee. And she was like, I don't have the time, but, but here's $10,000. And, and this year she wow. gave him five thousand wow. dollars. So that wow. is an example wow. of something that's totally unexpected and so generous. I yeah. think people—it's human nature to want to help. I know if someone asks me for to help them if I can in my personal life, I, I will. And I think it's the same thing with our nonprofits. I think if we ask people to help and they can, they will. I completely agree. I think that you know we underestimate the power of the impact we have and how people respond to it. We get tied up in asking for fifty thousand dollars because we can't even imagine writing a check for that money, you know. Um, much less being able to give it and and have that when for them it's not even a rounding error. Um, yeah. People with capacity. Um, Taylor's got a great question, and I yeah, think I this is that. something that comes up a lot, you know, and people kind of wonder. For a major donor, you close. Do you send them a gift like wine, flowers, etc.? Do you pay for their lunch, coffee when you meet to make an ask? If so, do you have a specific budget line or process to determine how you incentivize? Well, no, I, I never send a gift. I don't, um, I don't pay, we don't have the budget to pay for lunch. And right now that's not even an option. What I will do, and I think there is nothing more powerful than saying thank you. So for me, it's all about saying thank you. And um, in many cases I've even written, I've gotten old school, I mean, People like getting those thank you notes. It's so uncommon. So there is yeah. nothing more powerful than, than saying thank you. And, and, that, and that I yeah. think is more appreciated. You start buying people dinner and gifts, it, it becomes part of what's expected. And there's, I think there's kind of an ick factor to it. Well, yeah. it becomes so transactional. You yeah. know, you know it, and it, let me say this for real quick. Let's say that you guys are out here looking for a really big donor and maybe you're looking for a, a major sponsor for, for that. Most companies are going to negotiate for stuff. They're going to ask, say, well, are we going to get this included? Are we going to get the cups with our name on it? Are we going to get, you know, you're putting water bottles. We'd like to have that branding too. That kind of, that's after the commitment happens typically whenever that does. So don't be afraid of that part of it. But the point is, is just to get them in. And it's okay to say no. It's right. okay to do that. They're, you know, uh, there's a, a organization that has a large uh, fundraiser and I'm and they were uh, he, the CEO of the company the chairman was saying well, well we ought to get that don't we and I said tell him no tell him no I said he's okay say look we're going to go raise some more money with this bring it back to the mission say well we'd love to do that but we, we've got somebody who's willing to pay five thousand dollars for it so then you've just given him the option to say well okay I'll give you another five grand because I want that or oh well that's great I want you to go sell that it's not a, they want your mission to do well. They're not writing you a check so that way they get flowers in the mail. They're not right. writing you a check thinking, oh, I hope he sends me a case of wine. Nobody's going to write you a $50,000 check and expect you to send them something. They just don't. Right. I mean, it's back to the ick factor. Bonnie as you mentioned it. You know, if I make a donation, I don't want them using that money for, because let's just use an example. Let's say I'm, I like this because this it's easy on the math. Let's say it's a sponsorship to send kids to camp and it's a thousand bucks. 
well, if I just sponsor 10 kids to go to camp, you don't need to send me anything because my, what, my return on that investment is to be able to know that I sent 10 kids to camp. Right, you don't want I didn't give you 10 grand. Them. Yeah, that's that's the only return that they want is that emotional it's that emotional feeling um the deal. There is there there is some things where corporate, you know, corporations they want to be seen in the community because they know that the mayor is going to be at your event and they, you know, they're negotiating for a contract coming up and they want to be seen doing that. There is some of that. But the reality is the most powerful stuff is back to your mission drive and the impact you have on your community. That is yeah. the most important thing. Yeah. They want to know that every penny that they're giving you is going to your mission. And mm -hmm. believe me, I've had clients check Charity Navigator and whatnot and go to me, how come this and this and this? How, or they, they've checked our annual report. How come these expenses mm -hmm. are this, this, and this? So if right. you're taking them out for lunch and you're giving them this and that, they're going to wonder what other what other money that you're getting for donations right. is kind of being frittered away and not going to supporting the mission. Right. That's awesome. Well, you said okay. a simple thank you. And, and we interrupted you, Bunny. You said you went old school. Have you like handwritten notes, obviously, and things like that and hand delivered them and yes. this, that, and the other thing, right? That's Very yeah. effective, yes. right? Yes. Yeah, very powerful. Yeah. Email. yeah, well, another thing is, and I don't know if you, I mean, you could speak to this, but um, we call it interrupting the loop. You know, everyone does the same thing, right? So when everyone zigs, we zag, you know, it's kind of like, it's kind of one of our tenets, right? So when everyone's sending flowers and everyone's sending wine and all that stuff, but you make a point to make a phone call or write a letter and say thank you uh, with your own pen and pad. I think that interrupts the loop, so to speak. And I think that's really impactful to, for the recipient. I'm assuming that's worked really, really, really well for you. So yes, and, awesome. and the other thing I like to do, and I just did it this morning, I will email or text someone and go, instead of emails going back and forth, can we have a brief five minute conversation? There's nothing like hearing someone's voice and yeah. talking to them. And it yeah. doesn't have to be on Zoom. It can just be a short, brief conversation rather than these emails going back and forth and back and forth. And it's just another way to kind of cement the relationship and get to know someone a little better because those five-minute conversations usually last a lot longer. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think one of the things, too, is don't get caught. I mean, if somebody's willing to give you some time, the most people that have significant capacity, the most valuable commodity they have is time because they've got plenty of money. So when they are giving you your time, make the best use of it. Engaged, don't yeah. him haw around. Don't get well. Come right to the point. They, it, back to what Bonnie said earlier. They know you're going to ask them for money. It's yeah. really, and, and if they're, they've asked you, you know, they're, they're meeting with you, their answer is yes. Right. It's really a, to just how much they're going to do. A great story. I was telling a friend of mine last night at dinner. Um, I was in an event. I was, I was doing the event and I got up there to do the ask and I asked, and I didn't have anything to start with, but I just kind of had a feeling and I asked for $25,000. Guy raises his hand. At the end of it, um, the executive director, I overheard her telling him, said, thank you so much. You know, really appreciate you getting us started off. And he goes, oh, heck, that was no problem. He goes, well, you know, if Jason would have asked me for more. I might've given more. <laughs> so the point is people with significant capacity to give want to give that's why all the billionaires are all signing all these these things about giving they want to give their money away they can't spend it all they can only buy so many cars so many jets have so many you know girlfriends and entourages and houses and stuff like that so they're going to invest back in impact they were smart how they got their money they're smart how they invest it and they're smart how they give it away and if you are you know and they're they're going to give you time don't waste their time get to it make an ask and be ready and that's why i i, I challenge everyone who is already, if you're about to have an event and you're looking at it, add another tier to your, spo to your sponsorship. If well, nobody takes people, it, that's okay. Yeah, I, I will say to people, if you add, add a zero to whatever thing you're thinking of giving. So if you're thinking yeah. of 100, make it 1,000. If you're thinking of 500, make it 1,000. Add that zero. If they don't give it to you, they're going to give it to someone else. Exactly, exactly. Because, you know, the difference for them is, and it... With some people, it doesn't really even, you know, given a thousand bucks, it's kind of like, well, it doesn't really do much for me. But if you use a hundred thousand, okay, now you got my attention because again, it's back to the, having that capacity. So don't be afraid to ask. Whenever you put on your sponsorship levels, add another sponsorship level to it. Add one to the top. There was a group that um, 
in Tulsa, Oklahoma, the most they'd ever asked for was ten thousand dollars. So why don't you ask for twenty five? They got eleven sponsors at twenty five thousand dollars. Right, and I've heard that objection here. Um, you know, people will say to me, "Well, you're in New York. You know, New Yorkers are have a lot of money and are used to giving a lot of money." Well, there were wealthy people all over the country. Absolutely, They're not here in New York. And the demographics are the same. The, the thought process is the same and the ask is the same. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're wrapping up here. We're coming up on uh, about 10 minutes to go. So please, any last minute yeah, questions, last um, hit them out there. A last few questions. Yeah. Bonnie, pure gold, pure gold. All the, all the folks that are watching are saying the same thing. Great answers. Great content. Uh, we were joking about how long your title was. Well-deserved title, of course. Uh, Absolutely. However, however, expert relationship builder uh, would be something that I would add, obviously, uh, and can't thank you enough for shining some light on that. I think it's fantastic. Pure, Someone pure made gold. a really interesting uh, comment to me the other day. They said, you know, as we should treat our family and friends the same way we treat prospective clients at the first meeting, because you're so interested in what they have to say, and uh, it's all about yeah. them, and, you know, you're not offended. And, and I was like, wow, that's really a good point. I love that. I love that's that. That's great. Um, oh, I'm going to tell, so tell, any... tell that to my wife tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Bonnie, any final, any final words of encouragement that you could give our listeners today? Yes, just don't be yeah. discouraged. It's a numbers game. And we are yeah. going to get no's. That's just the reality of it. And don't take it personally. It's not that they didn't like you or they didn't like the mission. There are a million reasons. And like I said, a no today could be a yes tomorrow. So you just kind of have yeah. to um, wake up every day, not like it's Groundhog Day, because that, that would get a little boring, but just wake up every day with like a fresh start and, and uh, just approach it from that, that aspect and, and connect yourself to the mission and, and why you're doing it. And, and usually that, you know, hopefully that'll motivate you to just, you know, keep on going out there. It's not easy. I mean, it, it's really not. I've been doing this for a long time. And uh, there are yeah. days when, when I'm demoralized and I'm like, especially this year, yeah. it's been hard. People yeah. are having a hard time. They are. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's been said that if you can get anything in life you want, if you're willing to listen to a thousand no's. I love that. Yeah. Amy, I love that. Yeah. how about you? You got any parting, parting words of encouragement to everybody? Yeah, I mean, just echoing what, what Bonnie said. It's it's all about the relationships and, and not being afraid to make that ask because we are going to get no's and um, making sure that you do that research and go into your meetings, you know, with the knowledge that you need to make the ask. Cool. Thank you. Trevor? Yeah, be researched. Oh, I, I'm, I'm totally floored with, with uh, Amy and Bonnie's generosity and the time and the content. Phenomenal, phenomenal. Can't wait to have you both back on again. So thankful for everyone attending. Um, I would like for you to draw a winner of the travel item when you have an opportunity, amigo. And uh, I've got it right here. You guys ready? Yeah. yeah, great stuff. Great stuff, Bonnie. Can't thank you enough. Really, truly. That was really lovely. Thank you. Thank you yeah. guys so much. Okay, our winner today of the free uh, tripping experience that they can use for your very next fundraiser is Amanda Oliver. Amanda, okay. give everybody a big okay. hand to Amanda. Amanda. You showed up Amanda. and stayed there. Uh, That's great. Guys, thank you all so much yeah. for being here. Bonnie, yeah. thank you. Cannot thank you enough for coming and sharing time. Amy, yeah. it's always wonderful to have you here. We just really yeah. appreciate it. And yeah, all yeah. of you guys out there who came in here and tuned in today and spent time with us. So we really appreciate it. We'll be back yeah. again next week, Thursday, yeah. 12 tell Central. Tell a friend. Tell a friend. So, <laughs> and then Amy, uh, uh, Amy's already in it, but uh, Bonnie, we're adding you to the Zeitgeist, uh, the HGA Zeitgeist. So your email's out there now. We pride ourselves on being very easy to reach. So folks might reach out to you with some questions. Absolutely. And we appreciate you today to make yourself available. Thank you so very Absolutely. much for that. So. And uh, we're going to share your deck with anyone that will listen that has an email address. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank well, you thank so you much. Me. Thank I'm you. glad that, uh, you know, my feeling when I go on any webinar or any um, learning center is that if I can come away with one thing, one, one yeah. pearl, that it was mm -hmm. worth it. Oh, so totally. I hope, that, I hope that the listeners were able to walk away with at least one, mm -hmm. one thing that can help them. You gave us. Well, that's what we want to do here <laughs> every week. We we want we yeah. want everybody to walk away with at least one thing that's going to help them that they can put in into play that day. So thank you so very very much. Yeah, awesome, awesome. All right. Thanks so much.
Appreciate well, that wraps it up, everybody. Thank you guys so much. And uh, we'll see you here next week, 12 noon, and uh, next Thursday. Y'all have awesome. a great week. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much. Bye, Andy. Bye, Bye. Bye. Bye Bonnie.